Hello, my name is Tram Nguyen. I am a candidate of pharmacy class of 2021, and I'll be presenting on pioglitazone today. The brand name is Actose. So a quick patient consultation on this medication. It's used to lower blood sugar in patients with diabetes. It's usually taken once a day with or without food. Some common side effects include headache, common cold symptoms such as runny nose or stuffy nose, sore throat, and muscle pain. Report to your doctor if you do notice any of these side effects, such as shortness of breath, trouble breathing, abnormal heartbeat, swelling in the hands, ankles, or feet, rapid weight gain, vision changes, dark urine, and bone pain. So a quick introduction on this medication. It belongs to the drug class called thiazolidindions, or TZDs. They are oral anti-diabetic drugs. There are two drugs that are included in this class, which includes Pioglitazone, which is Actose, and Rosiglitazone, which is Avandia. They are indicated in the treatment of type 2 diabetes, usually as an adjunct agent on either second line or more commonly third line, when combination of other oral agents fail to provide adequate glycemic control. They decrease the A1C by about 1 to 2%. Um, some benefits of Actose is that it's associated with an improved lipid profile and possibly a decrease in the risk of MI. Some disadvantages include fluid retention, CHF, weight gain, and bone fractures. As for the mechanism of action, TZDs are called insulin sensitizers, so they work by binding to the PPAR gamma receptor, also to um, PPAR alpha to a lesser extent, in the liver, muscle, and adipose tissue. Stimulation of the PPAR gamma receptors influences the production of different genes involved in glucose and lipid metabolism. This enhances the insulin sensitivity of these target tissues, resulting in increased glucose uptake and utilization in muscle and adipose tissue. So Actose comes in the form of 15, 30, and 45 milligram tablets. The initial dose is usually 15 to 30 milligram by mouth once daily. For heart failure patients in the NYHA class of 1 or 2, they start with 15 mg once a day. It's actually contraindicated in patients with symptomatic heart failure or NYHA class 3 or 4. For the dose titration, it's based on the response to therapy and the tolerability to the medication. Increase the dose in increments of 15 mg up to maximum of 45 mg once a day. Um, Actose is also available in combination with other oral anti-diabetic drugs such as metformin, glimepiride, and aloglucan. So for dose adjustments, there's no renal dose adjustment necessary or hepatic dose adjustments. However, at initiation, um, caution needs to be taken if the baseline LFTs are abnormal. And during therapy, if liver injury is suspected, so if the patient is experiencing fatigue, jaundice, dark urine, etc., Interrupt the therapy and measure the serum LFTs. Do not restart therapy if the serum ALT is greater than three times the upper limit of normal and no other causes is identified. So some of the adverse effects of Actose includes headache, fatigue, fluid retention, edema, weight gain, back pain, hypoglycemia, hepatotoxicity, bone fractures, and anemia. So Actose carries a black box warning of congestive heart failure, so it may cause or exacerbate CHF in some patients. Initiation is contraindicated in patients with established NYHA class 3 or 4. So after initiation or dose increases, um, observe the patients carefully for signs and symptoms of heart failure. Um, Dose-related edema is also a warning of this medication. This increases the risk of CHF and weight gain as well as hepatic failure, hypoglycemia, increased risk of bone fractures or osteoporosis, particularly in female patients, increased risk of bladder cancer, and macular edema. So as for the monitoring parameters for Actose, for efficacy, we monitor the A1C at least twice yearly and the serum glucose level. For safety, monitor the liver enzymes such as ALT, AST, alkaline phosphatase, total bilirubin at baseline, every two months for one year and then once or twice a year. Signs and symptoms of fluid retention or heart failure, signs and symptoms of bladder cancer, bone density, and ophthalmic exam. And that is it for my presentation.
Thank you.